there are already in the world hundreds of millions of people, mainly in Africa and in India, who are not getting an adequate diet. By 2050, there'll be nine billion people in the world, and the challenge of feeding them all is going to be ever greater. It's clear this can't be achieved without adopting the latest technologies and ensuring that Africa can produce more than enough food for its population. It'll be a billion higher then than it is today. These technologies will include, obviously, low-till agriculture, getting by with less water, using less fertilizer and pesticide, selective breeding, but also GM technology. And I think it's going to be crucial that GM technology is part of the mix. That's going to be important because there have been problems, of course, in getting public acceptance of GM technology, especially in Europe. In the US it was fine, but in Europe there were concerns, I think because commercial interests came in before there was proper public engagement and it was not clear to the European public what the benefits were to them as opposed to the commercial interests. I think we need to handle that debate better in future. And I think there are other scientific issues where it's important that the scientists should engage with the politicians and with the public upstream, as it were, of any practical application. We in the UK did a fairly good job on stem cell technology by engaging with parliamentarians and the public before it became a serious issue. And we need to do the same with GM crops, because I think it's clear that if the world is to be fed in 2050, we need not only the latest technology, including GM, but of course we also need the political will to ensure that even with the technology, the resources are there to provide food where it is needed. <laughs>